Hey folks, Andrew Packer here. Welcome to Trading Tips. Now, if you're kind of like me, uh, maybe you follow a little show called Game of Thrones. It's entering its final season and it seems like there are so many people who just want to, you know, talk about it all the time and find all these little details and the minutia and what this means and what that means and when this character is coming back and there's a lot going on with the show. And admittedly, I haven't really started the new season yet because I like to just sort of binge them at the end of the season. But when I look at some of the things going on in the stock market, I think there's actually a similar story that's going on in an area that's even more exciting. And it's more exciting because it can make you money. Now this area of the market is called the 5G network. 5G just simply stands for the fifth generation. And the network is essentially the cell phone network. It's what we use every day to make calls and texts, but also receive video and other footage. And right now we're pretty much on the 4G network or 4G LTE, depending on what area you're in. Some more rural areas or sometimes when service isn't going so well, it might drop to 3G. But still, the 4G network lets us do a lot of things. And the 5G network, well, it's actually going to let us do a lot more. We're talking about network speeds and capacities that will allow things like self-driving cars uh, as they're passing by each other on the roads to interact with and talk to each other and share all their data rapidly and get that information that they need so that they you know, don't necessarily hit each other or if it looks like they're gonna hit each other, they swerve in opposite directions rather than into each other. So there's a lot of data that goes into that. Some of the, the AI technology that's being developed today needs fast internet connections, needs that fast ability to transfer just a lot of data quickly. And that's where the 5G is rolling out. And of course, like the many factions in Game of Thrones, the 5G network rollout has a lot of different components to it that go into it. There are some of the consumer companies where you have something like uh, Apple or Samsung. There's also Google that has a Google phone, things like that. This is just the hardware side of it. And then you might have some of the telecom companies like uh, your AT&T, uh, your Verizon, some of these names here. But then you also have the companies that are making the devices that go into the cell phones that make it possible to access the 5G capacity through these networks. You've got your companies like uh, Qualcomm, Intel, and a couple of other international names. Now, one of the interesting things and the biggest development in the 5G network occurred in the past week. So for the past two years, there's been a massive battle between Qualcomm and Apple. And what happened was Apple said, hey, we're not going to pay you a royalty anymore for any of the chips that we're using in, your phone, in our phones. And Qualcomm says, hey, you know, we have a contract. And then Apple says, no, you're charging too much. And you know, Qualcomm just comes back and says, our contract says that we get a royalty for every phone that you sell based on the price of what you sell. And since Apple sells its iPhones for far higher than what Samsung sells for a comparable phone, Qualcomm says they were you know, worth more money. So this has taken two years of back and forth, suing and countersuing, and then it gets to trial. And the day of the trial, there's opening statements between Apple and Qualcomm in front of a jury. And then all of a sudden, both companies suddenly decide instead of fighting each other, they're gonna make up and play nice and it's like mom and dad got back together. It's this crazy move where they agreed to drop all litigation against each other. They entered into an agreement uh, for six years for supplying the goods and technology and a couple of other developments as well. So once these two companies kind of you know, got together, Intel said, okay, we're no longer gonna make wireless chips. We're gonna get out of that market as well, rather than try to compete with Qualcomm with its 10,000 patents in the wireless chip space. And then you've had Samsung, which has been working on its own 5G enabled phone, and it's been struggling to get that going through. So there's kind of this shifting alliance going on that's far more interesting than some of the Game of Thrones seasons uh, that we've seen. And looking at all this, investors might be asking, okay, get to the point, Andrew, like how do I make money on this? Well, because Apple and Qualcomm are now kind of making nice, that money's been made there. Uh, I think the telecoms are gonna do, they're gonna do okay. They're just gonna continue to kind of pass through. But there's another group that I haven't mentioned that yet that, that could actually do very well in this space because it's got this right combination of value and just because of how they're structured as companies. And these are what I call the cell tower REITs. So as the name suggests, these are companies that are structured as real estate investment trusts, and they are firms that simply own the cell phone towers that you see on the sides of buildings or freestanding poles. And these are great companies to be in because it's a toll booth business. 
All of this technology can only work if it gets to the end user, you and me. And it's got to go through these cell towers for us to be able to access the network with our device and be able to, to interact with all of this other technology. And these companies are well positioned. They're a little more off the radar. I think there's a little bit of a, a good value there. So there are three companies in this space in the, that are publicly traded. First is uh, American Tower, ticker AMT. Then there's Crown Castle International, ticker CCI. And then there's SBA Communications, ticker SBAC. And these companies, again, own about 50 to 80% of all the cell towers around the country in the networks, just these three companies. So they are in a very good position. This is like buying a bridge between you know, one side of a river and another. If somebody doesn't want to use your bridge, they're going to have to drive miles around the other way. They're going to have to, you know, ford a wagon across like, like they're going on the Oregon Trail. This is exactly where we want to be as investors because whatever drama happens here, whatever little kind of inner house fighting we have like on Game of Thrones, these guys are just going to continue to make money. And, you know, with the higher fees that the 5G network is going to be able to charge customers, they're going to get a pass through on that as well. So which of these companies looks good? Um, I've ranked them by market cap. American Tower is the biggest, so it has, I think, the best positioning. Crown Castle actually pays a pretty good dividend, uh, about 3.6%. It's a little low compared to traditional REITs, but it's one that, relative to what these two are paying, under 2%, uh, looks far more attractive if you're more of a buy and hold investor. Uh, SBA Communications is the third company, I think has some growth potential and potential catching up to do. And then there are some smaller kind of non-publicly traded companies as well that these companies may be looking to acquire in recent years. So you can try and get into this fight that's kind of getting all of the market headlines right now, or you can think, you know, who else benefits? Who's really going to be the big winner with when all this fighting is done? Who's going to potentially be the last person standing? And it kind of comes down to these cell tower REITs. So take a look at them and consider a place for them in your portfolio. So that'll wrap things up for this edition of Trading Tips. Until next time, I'm Andrew Packer wishing you good financial trading and good financial health.